uh, to give me the opportunity to share uh, our association's uh, uh, past uh, 14 years of activities and use it as an example to demonstrate the collective efforts uh, is the essential element to make a civic engagement successful. Uh, I like to uh, start uh, put this uh, a modern physician's uh, requirement in the uh, uh, American uh, Medical Association, where essentially a triple threat uh, players. The, we need to be a physician, we need to be a, a teacher and mentor, we need to be a researcher. But we also, in the Hippocrat oath, we actually were required to be advocates for public health and prevent and protect public the, uh, in terms of health hazard and patient's health. So about uh, 2003, about 14 years ago, a group of Chinese physicians in Twin Cities felt the need to get together forming this association called uh, AMCP. Association of Minnesota Chinese Physicians. What we realized back then was uh, there was a need for helping each other to uh, promote each other in terms of breaking the professional glass, uh, ceiling, glass ceilings, to educate public by giving some public forum, health forum in the Twin City communities. But also, so I want to show you those leaders, we need strong leaders in terms of making things, making people uh, gather together, but we also realize that, that we need collective efforts to make things happen. So those are the, the past and present, uh, uh, you don't see those. Uh... Okay, so, so you said the slide shows the past and present uh, eight presidents of the association, and there, selfishness in terms of devoting their precious time to get things uh, going. And uh, about a year after the association started, we formed a Minnesota Chinese Health Center. And the reason we did that was to, this is under the leadership of the, the first president, uh, uh, Dr. Xu Shihai. So he's a general practitioner and Dr. Jiang Chen a GI physician. So we formed this uh, Chinese Minnesota Chinese Health Center on a purely volunteer basis. And bi-weekly, we opened our clinic for those people who are insured, not only for the local Chinese uh, patients, but we also opened it to a lot of people, Hmong communities, people from Cambodia, people working in the restaurants uh, without insurance, and even a lot of uh, visiting parents uh, of our Minnesota uh, friends, they, they do not speak English very well, so they go to hospitals without really getting a clear instruction on discharge of what it's all about. So that really results in this uh, bi-weekly clinic. As you can see that this is our most recent uh, uh, clinic schedule, and we kept that going for over 13 years. So a, a rough estimated about 5,000 uh, patients have gone through this clinic uh, for this, uh, uh, I, I consider to be a very beautiful civic in, engagement with the collective efforts of volunteer physicians from both Western trained physicians and the Chinese, uh, traditional Chinese physicians. And those are the three uh, health center directors uh, over the years. The current uh, director is Dr. Pei Yi Wang. She's currently the uh, internal medicine physician for the Atlanta Health. The first uh, director was Helen Yang and followed by the uh, uh, Luo Zhengzheng. She actually, Luo Zhengzheng, uh, Dr. Luo actually got the vaccine, the flu vaccine donation from the public, public, uh, public uh, Nicholas Health, that every year we actually offer to our seniors uh, the flu vaccine, about 100 to 200, 
to vaccine our seniors in our senior centers for many years uh, over, over <coughs> her tenure as a director. So Li Xia and Jenny Xia, those are two central figures that volunteer their time almost every other weekend, carry the cell phones, uh, organize the clinic over the last 13, 14 years as volunteers. Of course, we have so many other people, including a lot of traditional Chinese physicians uh, all volunteer for the clinic to do the acupunctures and, and other service. For the sake of time, I'm not going to bring through those. It really shows that the collectiveness, the unselfishness that really make the civic engagement, the community service, really, really uh, well because of all those uh, efforts. So I think because the organization has the spirit of sharing our responsibility, the compassion and working together, they really, really educated a lot of our physician leaders that really going out to the world to do good for the uh, community. Our first president, uh, Dr. Xu Shihai, just generally uh, established this uh, non-profit organization that called the Physician the Volunteer International. And then the group has gone to Haiti, to South, uh, South American, to African, providing uh, community service. Our second president, John Chen, I think this shows a lot of our group. Really, as a group, we really trained ourselves not to be the leader that show ourselves to promote ourselves, but to do good for the for the for the for the mass. So our seventh, second president, Jiang Chen, uh, who actually set up after he finished the AMC president presidency, he actually started the U.S. United States China uh, Health Informational Exchange. So he, by setting this nonprofit organization, he was uh, targeted to promote the health information exchange for the public and for the uh, uh, government agencies. So, as to myself, I was the third president. So, and then those are the president of the past ones and the present, present one, Dr. Da Yuanli. He's supposed to be the one doing the talk today. And uh, I remember this, I was in charge to do this talk because glory was attending my daughter's graduation, uh, high school graduation, just about a month or so ago. And by default, because she asked all the physicians there, who can join this uh, civic leadership forum? So I was the default, because nobody else wants to do it. <laughs> so of course, it was in my house for the party, so I have no, I have no way to refuse Gloria. So the. The association, the Chinese uh, American Heart Association, was formed in 2006. And our president, AMCP President Hua Guili, he was the founding vice president of that national organization. We got about 600 members of cardiologists, cardiology scientists all over the US and, and Canada. So you can see the connection that Hua Gui Li, Dr. Li, was a founding VP because he used experience from Minnesota and contributed that experience to the national organization. And he introduced me to be the member of that association. And I became the third president of that association. And Dr. Da Li uh, Feng, and he was our fifth, uh, just the past, immediate past president of AMCP. But he was the VP of the organization national group. The current president, Dr. Guo Hongsheng, and the vice president, Dr. Da Yuanli, for the Chinese American Heart Association. And they both, uh, so Guo was the, the past president of AMCP, and Da Yuanli is current the president of our association. So you can see that our community here from Minnesota, the Midwest town of Minnesota, we contribute to a national effort in promoting public health as our national, as our common goal. And those are the, the activities we did uh, 
for the Chinese American Heart Association, not only to help each other to promote our own professional career in the US, but also to promote the public health education across the Pacific. So we did a lot of things uh, in China as well. And currently, Dr. Dali uh, Feng and myself, uh, we uh, were appointed uh, or elected to be the vice president of the World Association of Chinese Cardiologists. And this was just started last uh, 2015, and we are on the third, first term of our, our duties to promote interactions among all cardiologists across the globe that of Chinese origin. Of course, we try to bridge American Association uh, uh, experiences. I've been volunteer, be a committee member, council member for American Heart Association, and also the committee member for the Heart Rhythm Society of the U.S. to so bring that experience to the World, world Organization to promote public uh, health. So locally, I want to show you our local Jews, uh, the Ken Liao, Dr. Liao sitting here. So just about a year ago, he actually performed on the Valentine's Day, performed our Union of Minnesota heart transplant on the Valentine's Day, the best gift he gave to an American uh, patient. And he's currently the uh, minimum invasive surgery director for University of Minnesota. He has been doing so much for uh, the University of Minnesota, but also for patients overall. And you can see that uh, myself, uh, I had an opportunity in 2003. I did a procedure on a patient who actually was a member of Flying Tiger. So you, have, you all know about the story of Flying Tiger uh, during the World War II before Americans declared war against Japanese. So a group of volunteers, the Air Force people, went to China and helped that war. And a lot of people died over there. And this is one of the patients I took care of. When he need the procedure to do the pacemaker, I need to take the electrode out of his heart. That surgery was 10% mortality. It was pretty high back then. And he knew that I was a Chinese. He was so happy. He said, I wanted you to do the surgery for me. And I said, I wanted to help you because I want to pay the debt on behalf of the Chinese to, to do it for him. So many things led, went to another. My personal experience and my effort of, of, of uh, doing uh, community service led to the, uh, particularly my volunteer for the American Heart Association. In uh, 2013, I was awarded the AHA Hero Award. And it's really, I want to quote the uh, Joseph Campbell, who's an American uh, lecturer and professor and mythologist. He said that hero is somebody who gave their life to something much greater and much bigger than themselves. So I don't think the, the hero is somebody who wants to promote himself or herself. It's somebody who actually amplifies his or her effort, energy, uh, and preferably silently behind the scene. So I was put on the stage because I think this opportunity in Minnesota shows the great community of Minnesota. That evening, we used the opportunity to raise almost $2 million for the public good, for the public good. And Dr. Kelly was there, you can see the picture, Clara was there in the evening. So that was a really good opportunity to do something good for the community. So myself is a patient, and that's the reason I actually triggered the whole, my passion to public health. So 2004, I had a, a cardiac event, not a heart attack, but we call it a cure current syndrome, and I received a stent. So in the evening in Hennepin County, my next door guy, he actually had exactly the same procedure, but he had a cardiac arrest and did not make it. So I made a promise that evening that if I get out of the hospital, I'm going to do something. So a month after that release from the hospital, I did this public forum. 
uh, in the uh, Chinese uh, Sunday uh, Saturday school. And I was trying to show it in that picture of doing how to do CPR to save lives. And since then, we at the community AMCP and the health center, we did a, quite a few public forum and to teach people how to do CPR and to save life. And you can see the effort, the effort really paid off. Those two guys over there, both of them in 2013, saved two lives. One was, uh, happened, uh, one gentleman played uh, uh, badminton in Woodbury High School and collapsed and had a cardiac arrest and resuscitated by a Chinese uh, friend over there. Another one in Eden Prairie High School playing uh, basketball volleyball and also had a cardiac arrest and saved. Okay, our gross uh, root effort really pays, paid off. Now you can see that Minnesota, we said if you want to have a cardiac arrest, do it here in Minnesota. <laughs> because, because if you look at national statistics, the two cities had the, the highest survival rate, one is Seattle, one is in the city of Seattle, one is in Twin Cities. So we're lucky to be in this city that have a high survival rate. So, <laughs> So we actually use the opportunity to, to do those public uh, education. You can see that in Woodbury High, using that opportunity of play, the, the resuscitation success, we actually did, the American Heart Association, Association did in conjunction with the fire department in Woodbury, we did that education effort, how to perform CPR. From the, this experience locally, we brought that to the national effort, the Chinese American Heart Association, in conjunction with American Heart, we actually brought the education effort to China. Those are the group of Chinese cardiologists learning how to do CPR. This is the effort that we made from Minnesota. We actually did education in India, in Hyderabad, India. About 2,000 uh, physicians in India learning how to resuscitate people. This is one of our colleagues from the VA hospital. We actually did a, a telemedicine to broadcast the, the, uh, the uh, retraining material from live from Minnesota. So this is our effort to show you that I think if we at the Chinese community if we collaborate with, with associations uh, in the U.S., for instance, the American Heart Association, the World Health Foundation uh, Federation, this is Dr. Smith and that's Dr. Uh, uh, the uh, Yancy. Both of them are close friends of mine. We work together and try to bring a lot of American experience to the world, to China and to Asia. And I want to close uh, by, uh, I already gone beyond my time, so I'm three minutes behind, uh, beyond. I want to close by showing you these slides. This last week I was doing procedure on a patient, I to do a pacemaker implant procedure. And I saw this little pillow, a heart-shaped pillow on his stretcher. And it really remind me, this is from Mended Heart Foundation. And those ladies using their retirement time, making pillows, and they provide free heart-shaped pillow to each patient that going through open heart surgery. Any heart surgery, they will provide this kind of a pillow. And since that the civic engagement to me, you don't have to think a lot about fighting your right. Of course, that's, that's what you should do, like if you get mistreated. But I think a lot of civic engagement is about service. How do you provide service to your community? And that goes to say a lot. I see a quote there, Winston Churchill saying that you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give. And I close that by showing this to thank our, our wives of all the association leadership. And without them, you can see that Zoe is here and the rest of my wife in the audience, those are the, the, the people that make, they support us and make things possible. Thank you so much for it.